Welcome back to the workshop. Today we're going to learn how to build inside the Fantex P200A, which is a versatile small compact case, which is meant for mini ITX, but has a port up to like a 420 millimeter GPU, an ATX power supply, 240 millimeter radiator. It just has a ton of clearance specs on paper, but we're going to see if that lives up to the hype. So let's find that out. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is introduce you guys to the case and get familiar with it. So in the front, we have a mesh panel, which is great for optimizing airflow for such a small case. And then we have the front IO on the bottom of the case here, on the bottom of the front panel, which is kind of interesting, but it also routes all the front IO cables very well from this position. So that's probably why it's here. We have the power button up on top of the case, which is not too big of a deal, but we have all our ports down here, which is USB 3.0. We have two of those, a Type-C port, which is USB 3.1, a headphone audio jack, and then we have the RGB buttons over here. One controls the mode and one controls the color. And if you want to remove the panel, it's very easy. You just lift up underneath here and you pull out over here. And here you can see all the cables running through over here, which is very neatly done in my opinion. Now there is no magnetic dust filter or anything like that. Um, which can be a good thing or a bad thing because sometimes the dust filters can create air turbulence which can then restrict airflow to some degree. And for such a small case, it's probably optioned out to maximize the airflow going in. But the mesh in the front is already pretty fine, so it already probably filters out a decent amount of particulates. Now you don't have to use the front panel for intake either. You can use the bottom for intake if you wish to do so. And this does have a mesh dust filter over here that slides out across the entire bottom of the case which is nice but you notice this mesh over here on the bottom of the case isn't as fine as the front mesh panel so that's probably where you would see more turbulence if you did have a magnetic dust filter over there so you have options for intake on the bottom or the front and to take out the side panel which is glass on this case now it does come with the option for a non-tempered glass side panel and it does have mesh included on it if you wish to have that airflow option this is the tempered glass version so i went with that one now you'll notice over here there's a bit of an indent in the case over here and that is to pretty much wedge your finger in here and take off the side panel like so and it kind of hinges out and pops in. So it's pretty easy to take off and pretty easy to put back in. So I do appreciate that. And it is also the same for the rear panel. So like I said, same story with the rear panel here. And you'll also notice that we do have some mesh over here in case you decide to put a mount a radiator on this side of the case as well. Plenty of mounting options for a radiator, the front and the side. For a mini ITX that can fit a 240 millimeter radiator in two places this is quite the feat in my opinion. And back here it might not seem like there's a lot of room for cables, but it's managed pretty nicely. So you have a channel running down in the bottom and through the middle of the case and also up here. And this is your main channel over here, your main embankment that will probably cater to most of your cables. Now you can also mount two, two and a half drives over here and you can mount four, three and a half drives. Now they wouldn't be sticking on the side like so, but they would be kind of sticking outward like that. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do here is just install the motherboard. Make sure to install your rear IO before you do so. My motherboard comes with that already pre-installed to the back of it, which is pretty nice. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. All right, and once you have your motherboard installed, the manual says to install your power supply next. Now this does fit an ATX power supply. And since it says it can, we're going to do that. And not with just a little power supply. We're gonna do that with a Dark Power Pro 11750 watt from Be Quiet. Um, now this is an ATX power supply and uh, it's also fully modular. So I would recommend at least going semi-modular or fully modular with your power supply option that you choose just because it's a lot less cables that you have to manage and it makes it a lot easier to kind of plan out your build, especially when dealing with a smaller case. It installs in this little bracket over here that you just unscrew and you screw it in and then you screw in the bracket with the PSU attached back into the case. And that is exactly what we're gonna do. I can't believe I put this PSU in this little case. I mean, it fits so nicely and there's plenty of clearance. So if you wanted to add extra cables in here, you can totally do it before you add anything else in. So for right now, I just tucked all the cables out towards that giant cable cutout, which it's supposed to be used for. And I'm gonna try to use all of that cable routing to hide all the cables out that way and not have any dangling in here. So I'm gonna try and get that done. So now for this part, I'm gonna get the mounting hardware for the CPU cooler installed 
as well as doing some pre-wiring. And for the cooler today, we're gonna to use a new cooler out from Fantex, the Glacier 1 240MP. So it's a simple design aesthetic, and I really like it. And it's also gonna match those DRGB fans that come included with the case. All right, I went ahead and pretty much cable routed or pre-wired everything that I needed to before installing the AIO. You can also see here, I have a riser cable over here, which is not included with the case, but you can get it specific to this case because of its short cable length over here. Now just make sure whatever motherboard that you're using is using PCIe 3.0 before you wanna use this cable riser because 3.0 is what this cable riser is. Now it can be a little bit tricky to get your top mounted cables over here on top of the motherboard over here with the PSU installed. Uh, you can try installing this after if you find that easier. It can go either way. It's a little bit tricky, but uh, you have so much room to work with over here. Just try to use that to your leverage if you can. Also, I would recommend using at least one three to one fan splitter if you have one. It depends how many fan headers you have on your motherboard, but for me, I only have three. So with that being said, I'm going to install this bracket over here for the vertical GPU mounting, and I'm also going to install the rear fan over here as well. And then we'll move on to the AIO. Actually, a little bit of a correction here. If you want to use the rear fan over here, you cannot have a vertical mounted GPU. So that'll be up to you what your preferences are, but I'm going to vertically mount this GPU because if you want to vertically mount your GPU, it's the only way you're going to get a 240 millimeter rad installed into the case. At least that's what my representative told me from Fantex. Okay, and to get your bracket installed, I would first install the riser cable to the bracket. And then once that's done, I would install the bracket to the case. And the case has two different areas. You can either mount it a little bit closer or a little bit further. So I like that they give you a little bit of distance from the glass panel over here to optimize that airflow. And another plus is that you can fit an entire screwdriver vertically, even with the PSU installed to tighten down the screws that are holding the bracket into the case. That's awesome. And then the next thing you gotta do is take out the expansion slots over here, take out this little cutout, and then flip this vertically and put this back over here. So they kind of do a little bit of a trade over here so that you can mount your GPU vertically. But we're not gonna install the GPU just yet because we gotta get that AIO mounted. So I'm gonna flip these two around so that I can have the expansion slots vertically mounted and then we'll get to the water cooler. All right, so I have pretty much everything installed except for the GPU. Now I had to mount the water cooler or the radiator for the water cooler on this side of the case, and I actually do have two fans on the other side of this radiator over here, and I'm having that as an intake. Now, technically, you could have that as exhaust, but I mean, I really don't care. So the front is gonna be intake, and the side's gonna be intake, and we're gonna have exhaust on the bottom here and exhaust for the power supply. Is it probably wrong? Maybe. But right now, it's really late, so I'm really not gonna get too far into it and try to change it up now. Now, the radiator had to be mounted to this side for the size of the cooler that we have for the GPU. That GPU being the Hellhound 6700 XT from Power Color. So it does fit over here, but you need to mount the radiator to the side panel instead of the front panel. Now you'll notice I added another fan over here for exhaust, as I mentioned earlier, and this little bracket for the vertical GPU mounting does clear it actually. So that is really nice if you wanna add that in. And if you did go with a traditional horizontal mounted GPU, you could have a, another fan over here for intake or exhaust, your choice. Also, one more thing I wanted to point out, I do have the GPU installed by this point, is that the AO has room to mount the radiator higher than the pump, which is great so that we don't have water accumulating in the pump if the pump was higher than the radiator. All right, so I finished tidying up the cables. It's not very neat, but we do have some main channels going on here. And I do get a lot of comments about people being mad about the cable management in the rear of the case. And my motto is, as long as it looks good on the display side, it really shouldn't matter how it looks in the back. But the important thing to take away here is that we have a lot of room back here with all this cable channeling going on. So getting to the final thoughts and building through this case, I think this is one of my favorite ITX cases to build in. That's that. I haven't seen this much clearance in this size of a case and built so well with cable management in mind and just functionality and versatility all the way around and optimized for airflow. I don't know what else I can ask for from this case, honestly. And the best part is this case with the two DRGB fans and the glass side panel cost 70 dollars MSRP. And for the non-tempered glass with the ventilated side 
panel and the two regular fans in the front, it's $50. <laughs> I don't know how Fantex is making this quality of a case at such of a price tier. Because usually when you get into the small form factor cases and hardware, it gets very expensive because you have to consolidate all this technology and practicality down to a smaller size, and it takes a lot more research and development. I highly recommend this case. That's all I can really say. I would definitely use this for my personal mini ITX PC case when I eventually downsize to it. I just don't know what else to say. I'm probably rambling on at this point. Hope you all enjoyed the video and found it helpful. I'll catch you guys in the next one.